picture from relating to the images that we saw in the first video um, of you, with, uh, you know, in work and, and doing all your things. So what, how would you describe civil engineering? Yep, um, probably as a Google response uh, with <laughs> the design, construction and maintenance of the built environment. So everything around you that you can see that, and everything that people need to get from A to B. So uh, roads, motorways, bridges, canals, um, then utilities, so pipes, clean water, wastewater, mm -hmm. um, internet or um, <laughs> electric, and then buildings and structures, so schools, hospitals, um, tower blocks, and then in terms of structures could be a lot of things I've worked on with bridges, uh, so large concrete structures, large steel structures, and then some other jobs I'd worked on. So if I went back sort of to follow the video, I started in utilities, which was a lot of pipe laying, so pipe for water. Um, then I moved on to a flood alleviation project, which was improving the flood defence in East Belfast. So following a river, uh, really making a flood wall, seven okay. kilometres along it. But coupled with that, it was also the construction of a greenway. So then that was uh, providing a non-trafficked route for seven kilometres through the that area of the city. Okay. Was so such a great for community impact. Yeah, was that for pedestrians and bikes and things for along yeah. the the flood route as well? So it was sort of a, a combined project. Yeah. Yeah. So it was great to actually see that in, in terms of flood defence, but also such a great improvement for the people in the area. Yeah. Um, okay. And then other than that, I've mainly been on bridges and a bit of marine works now. So um, everything is floating. So it's that bit harder. Okay, okay. <laughs> we <laughs> might talk about that in a minute then. Okay, interesting. So, so civil engineering, basically, if we look at a building or sort of the built environment around us, civil engineers have been involved in designing that and building that and make sure it's safe and and it's used the right materials and that's what you study at university you study all the materials all the the engineering the physics and everything behind that to make sure we're all safe which is a big thing okay so in the video the initial video you showed um lots of different sites that you'd worked on so there's places in wales you've said you've been in belfast and where are you at the moment and what's your project that you're working on at the moment Yep, uh, at the minute I'm on a project in Great Yarmouth, which is mm -hmm. the construction of a bascule bridge. So it's a bridge which lifts up in the middle to let boats through. Right, um, okay. So it's um, a £60 million project and it's split into three sections, um, east of the river, west of the river and the river. So I'm responsible for the river, everything to do with the bridge. Okay, right. Okay, so there's the infrastructure on each side. That meet the river, yeah. uh, that meet the bridge, and then you're doing the. Is it a bridge that opens like this? If you can see me, yeah, like, yeah, up like that. So it's a bascule bridge. I was, I remember you telling me about that before, but I couldn't remember the name of it. So I would never have known the technical term for that. So interesting. Okay. Um, and have you worked on any of these sort of bridges before? Is this a new, a new sort of design project that you've had to to work on? Yeah. Um, any bridges I've built before have not moved. So this is. <laughs> new one um, okay. I have built a link span which would move based on the tide going up and down oh, okay so it would a link span would be connected fixed on one end and then the other end of it moves with the tide but oh. I haven't built anything which moves mechanically yeah. so this is this will be powered to move up and down okay so does that add a bit of a uh, bit of difficulty and a bit of more um sort of I don't know engineering sort of thinking on your part as to how it's all going to fit together and and work. Yeah, there's a lot more um, interface with mechanical and electrical works right, than we would okay. normally have. Mm -hmm. So we will do all the concrete works to make the abutment and the bascule pit, but then we have um we have a steelwork supplier who will build the bridge, the physical leaf of the bridge, and then we have a mechanical and electrical contractor who will do also the hydraulics, how the okay. the actual bridge yeah, lifts. So there's the a lot of stuff. management of all of the interfaces and those involved. 
Okay, so who's in charge of that as, as the project? Are you as a civil engineer in charge of that or is there an overall team um, sort of management or? <coughs> yeah, um, it's in the area I'm responsible for. So I'm okay. responsible for the three, the on-site sort of construction works we'll do ourselves and then the steel work and the M&E and hydraulics contractor okay. about Excellent. bringing it all together. So, and then we have a very specialist design team who are then working along with us the whole way. OK. To make sure that we are building it as per design and then any sort of tweaks as we go for actions. OK, so a lot of teamwork and a lot of different people inputting in their, their ideas. It's a big job. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think, yeah, I can't even imagine how big it is. It's, yeah, and, and on the scale of the actual size of the build. So it's brilliant. Um, so I know we've talked before in the video previously, maybe that we didn't show, that your different projects are in different points of different parts of the world and different parts of the UK and things. So, mm -hmm. and a really interesting thing for me is the way you work um, and live you work in the UK at the moment or in, in, in England at the moment, but you live actually in Northern Ireland still, don't you? As far as I'm aware. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. how does how does that work with work with Farron's and the company, like where you work and where you live and what travel has been involved in your career sort of overall? Yeah, um, so as a contractor, Farron's now we have 80% of our work is in the mainland. Uh, we are increasing our work in the south of Ireland and we always have a, a base amount of work in Northern Ireland. But with the level of, as the company's growing, it's growing more in England, um, which you can see because we don't, in Northern Ireland doesn't need that many more roads. Um, the roads we have need upgraded, right. but we don't need bascule bridges. We don't need certain types of infrastructure, which we, which England does. Okay. Um, so we travel where the work is mm -hmm. um, so we commute Monday to Friday normally uh, and then some engineers would commute for two weeks and right. some of our specialist subcontractors would go maybe for two weeks at a time. And when you say commute how do you commute? Uh, we fly from Belfast <laughs> to <laughs> wherever the nearest airport is to the job. Me, so is that quite reg is that usual for you now you're commuting on an aeroplane rather than just driving to work every day? It's quite different yeah. to some people. <laughs> it's quite um quite normal for Farans, yeah. It's yeah. A weird lifestyle that everyone has got used to. Yeah, no, really interesting. Yeah. I can't imagine people would think that, you know, as a civil engineer, that might be how you work and how you live, sort of travelling all the time. Um, I know your picture is um is, is breaking up for us a little bit, but your sound is fine, so we'll keep going. So that's fine. Yeah. Okay, and working wise, I know you've worked in quite a bit of work in Wales um so what what areas of the country have you worked on in the last few years yep um so i did start doing a bit of work in northern ireland and then i worked in dublin for a few years back to belfast and then i've worked in sunderland um on quite a large bridge and i was in wales for a good few years on a wind yep. farm and uh water treatment works yeah and then to liverpool for a couple of years and now I'm in Great Yarmouth. Hmm. So yeah quite a variety of places. How do people, I can imagine um, if you're thinking about a future career, how would people with a family deal with that? How do people you know in your industry um, where work is quite you know far away from where they live, do they just commute sort of on the weekly basis? Is that the usual thing? Yeah, um, yeah, it's quite okay. common now for people from uh, Northern Ireland to commute maybe Monday to Thursday, Monday to Friday. Mm -hmm. um, and then last year, as many negative effects there were last year, it has positively improved people being able to work remotely. Uh, and a lot of okay. people who would have gone to England maybe for two days a week don't mm -hmm. go now because right. they can manage their work from home. Uh, OK, is that because they're doing design and things that can be shared? by you know computers internet and that sort of thing yeah a lot of people would have been coming over for meetings and that sort of thing so now right we've, okay we've all adapted and um, mm -hmm. so maybe maybe the frequency has halved or even, okay. even more that they would have to travel and then the site-based staff so we are responsible for what's happening on the ground we do need yeah. to be there yeah but there is a bit more flexibility now that do we need to be there five days a week or 
the odd week come and just okay. be there for sort of yeah thing. I think it's made it a bit more flexible for everyone a bit more manageable in a way so I think that's great okay um so a big question which I think a lot of female engineers will be asked <laughs> and remember please um we've got a couple of questions popped up in the chat but please add your questions to the chat so anyone in the audience you've got a question uh, it's Lindsay whether it's about what she's doing now about engineering in general civil engineering um, about how you can get into engineering you know what the the career and routes are and things like that please pop them in the chat um but my question is what is it like being a woman in your industry is it is it in you know in my imagination i can imagine there's not many women on a construction site as one of the lead sort of civil engineers so how is it for you and how's it been over the years um <laughs> It's 90%, 99% of the time, it's fine. Um, okay. You'll always come across people who have, have an issue with, or not have an issue with, but they have been brought up not thinking that females work on site. Mm -hmm. um, they maybe have never worked with a female on site, um, just because that's how it's been, not mm -hmm. by not wanting to. Um, but yeah, generally it's fine. There's... A lot of things are much better than when I started. Uh, when I was a student, welfare wouldn't have been as good. So we would have been sharing a port loo on the side of a motorway. <laughs> okay. So I would have had to have a, one of the boys standing outside to make sure no one opened the door in yeah. the middle of a motorway, for example. <laughs> uh, whereas That's a lot now, better now, is it? Yeah. <laughs> our standards of what is acceptable are much higher. So mm -hmm. we have great facilities. We have kitchens, we have cookers anything you could want to make your lunch on is there and there's segregated right. toilets and different changing right. rooms and everything you would expect in an office we have on site okay well that's good good news and ppe has improved quite a lot personal yeah. protective equipment so uh, mm. high-vis clothing previously would have always just been big and unfitted <laughs> yeah um, and now there's a lot more brands and availability okay. for all those things so there's even in the it's probably 14 years since I first went on to site, yeah. there's a massive improvement, which has to be due to demand as well, which is yeah. showing the, the increase in numbers is happening. Yeah. Have you seen that personally? Have you worked with more women so more recently than you had done when you first sort of um, got into, in, uh, into your career? Have you seen um, more women so coming on site? I did work one job I worked on in Belfast. Our engineering staff was half female, okay. which was great crack. And, mm. uh, <laughs> normally good crack anyway, but it was a really nice balance. Yeah, um, I haven't quite had that since, but there's definitely an increase happening. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Um, and all right, I'm still waiting for some more questions. I've got a couple in there which I will ask. Um. But I don't know if this might be a question that somebody asks, I guess. But what is your favourite part of your job of being a civil engineer? Um, it's probably solving really tricky problems with a team. OK. So <clears throat> working with whoever, our team varies a lot when we move project to project. We're always with different people. Um, but it's really nice that if we come up against a challenge and we don't know how to fix it and everyone is trying their very best and working together to solve whatever doesn't fit or you know something how to solve the problem it's really it's, nice once you get to that point yeah and you don't have to do it on your own you've got people to to share the discussion with and the problem with okay and problem solving is a massive thing about stem in general and sort of problem solving mm -hmm. Um, in a team I think is, is even more satisfying sometimes okay and again the opposite what is your least favourite part of being a civil engineer apart from maybe the weather which I can guess can be a bit annoying in certain situations yep um <laughs> probably just the travel um, okay ideally it would be nice to live in the same place every night of the week um, yeah but with the nature of the work you you have to make a call of great work and travel mm -hmm. and possibly settling for something less exciting yeah. uh, to, to go home every night, mm. uh, okay. which then just depends on the person. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. What's going on for what suits 
but then okay. the weather a lot of people complain about the weather but I think if you're planned enough you can normally look at the forecast and work out get your all your outside stuff done before the rain comes oh, okay. we used to just have to be organized <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah like, okay, that's the rain in the morning do the do the setting out tonight yeah sort of oh fair enough. no that's that's good good point yeah be well organized think ahead <laughs> okay um so some questions now from the audience um oh good question it's always an interesting one is the job well paid and i think it'd be interesting to see what you get as um a graduate engineer you know first going into the career and then what you can build up to what how, how do you feel the pay is yeah um it's very well paid um especially compared to other graduate positions from other mm -hmm. subjects um i'm not sure are you wanting figures or um, you, you can get sort of ballpark figures you don't have to sort of say what you earn <laughs> at all but yeah, um i think yeah um, just an idea of a graduate um wage would be interesting salary as far as i know graduate wages at the minute are about 27 to thirty thousand. okay um, and then with different companies there's different add-ons uh depending on where you have to travel to right so um extra payment for the the extra travel and things like that you can get on top yeah. of that and, and usually london areas is a bit more that's just sort of general jobs have a little bit more as well um so i think that's probably a little bit above average for for a graduate job there um there what sort of are you looking at for um you know a well experienced civil engineer um you know what could you be looking to aim for salary wise after a few years of experience um probably around 40 to 50 okay so that's definitely higher than the sort of average average wage of um of the uk okay so something to think about definitely and it's a great um thing to go into as a a graduate definitely okay um Right, another thing about money, but in a different area. So, um, do you worry that you may go over budget when you are on a project? Because you said your bridge project was sixty million pounds, which is a lot of money. So, do you worry about budget, and how do you make sure you stay in that budget? Yep. Um. So, the project will be tendered for, so it will be estimated. Um. Each company will have an estimating department. So to win the work, we will have submitted a bid. Um, mm -hmm. So that forms the basis of what money we can spend on site to get the work done. Okay. So it's really it's very well broken down into individual items. <clears throat> so, for example, we're completing piling works at the minute and I will know the allowance for piling works is X amount. And yeah. I have three months to get it done. So to have eight labourers per day will cost this. Is that? enough money for three months or do we need to be working faster or okay. what needs to change so there's a lot of detail already done before we get to site we have a mm -hmm. allowance to target and then if changes occur depend there's different contractual arrangements then for who's responsible for the change or the delay and that sort of thing so it's thought of constantly Okay, so it's always it tweaked and it's managed. always monitored. Yeah. yeah, and a lot of sort of yeah. So it's the it's the calculations of how much how long something takes, how much you've got allocated for it, have we got enough time, is it going to fit into the budget, that sort of thing, and it's always reviewed. Okay, so it's a wonder when things go very very over budget, how that's allowed to happen. Can you do you see that as in your job? You go, you know, it must have been badly planned if something goes really over budget um it was either the 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 quote they gave at the beginning was way too too cheap sort of thing or it's just overrun probably yeah yeah probably one or the other because at the end of a lot of projects there will be um penalties so if we okay. haven't completed on time a certain clients will have put in uh liquidated damages is that the right term so for every day you're late there will be a fee right okay um, so on certain projects and then as you were saying yeah potentially things may be underpriced mm. in a bid for, be quite regular yeah. people being optimistic maybe 
<laughs> about how things are going to go. OK, um, oh, I've got a question here. Um, I've heard that civil engineers love concrete. Is that true? <laughs> yes, probably most. <laughs> Is that because it's such a versatile material to use and it can just sort of solve most problems? So, um, I would be involved in the the pouring of the concrete. So, as in bringing in lorry after lorry into yeah. a pump, pumping it into place, and yeah, there's a thrill, there's a bit of a thrill <laughs> with um. So for on the wind farm, for example, we knew it was going to be 360 cube and it's probably 80 pound a cube. Um, but we were one hour's drive from the town. But right. You had to finish the pour and you weren't allowed to waste concrete. Right. So it was the morning would be, where's the lorries? Where's the lorries all morning? How much have we got in? Is it being placed correctly? And then the end of the day would be trying to measure to, to get exactly the amount of concrete you needed because it could vary. Yeah, but, uh, we all find it a bit of a, a thrill to get it right. <laughs> you have and to so explain if you got it right, it's very extra. satisfying. If you have extra. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Where's, where should it go? Yeah. Interesting. OK. And um, yeah, for you, what is your favourite material to sort of design something in and, and build something in? Is there any preference or is it just really dependent on the job and the challenge of each job? Um. Probably just depends about the works. Um, I've only really worked with large steel uh, structures and bridges. Okay. I actually get involved in that in the past few years, and I quite like it because it's very defined. And mm -hmm. on the drawing, it's millimeter perfect. Yeah, you know built. how long it's going to be and how it fits together. Yeah. And then, because to contrast that, what we do on site with piling and concrete. It will also be accurate, but it's much harder to get it accurate mm. than the, the steel work because you're yeah. in a controlled environment, whereas outside is. Yeah. If you, is, so the piling yeah. is the making the holes in the ground to put sort of um, steel, um, not steel, concrete into to then build on top of. Is that right? That's yeah, fine. or steel, steel tubes. Or, right. OK. Or concrete. There's there's a lot of different types of piles, but yeah, they're for the foundations. So okay. they're always very, you know, it'll be heavy, big materials. So it's hard yeah. to see them accuracy. OK, fair enough. Yeah, steel, very accurate. I remember that. OK, <laughs> so <laughs> I have another question coming in. Oh, do you know why the Leaning Tower of Pisa has not fallen over? Is that in your in your knowledge base? <laughs> and why is it leaning in the first place, I guess? No, I'm not sure. <laughs> really. It was bad. I think it was bad foundations, so they didn't have any concrete at the time, I'm guessing. So probably would have <laughs> done better with some uh, concrete foundations, I guess. They maybe put something in temporary once it started to move. They maybe yeah. did something to stop it. Yeah, that, more. Is, that is probably what it is, isn't it? So it hasn't fallen over because they sort of <laughs> put something under the, the dodgy side. Yeah. I haven't seen, they haven't got any props or anything, so it's quite impressive that, you know. Um, okay, a question from me, because I know that from your video and from our previous chat, you've been abroad to work on a project. Um, mm -hmm. So I can imagine some people looking for careers or students maybe looking to work on projects and get experience. What was your, what did you do uh, and what country was it in? Yep. Um... It was three years ago now. Uh, I joined a team. There were four of us from Northern Ireland as part with the ICE, the Institution of Civil Engineers. Uh, we travelled to Rwanda to build a footbridge in the Matovu re region. Uh, right. So it was five five hours drive away from the capital, Kigali. Um, so the charity which organised it uh, was called Bridges to Prosperity. So we teamed up um did a lot of fundraising the design was already established so we just uh, created method statements on how we would build it and then there was a foreman who has built various uh, of the same bridge so then we traveled out to rwanda to construct all of the superstructure so everything above ground in two weeks so it was really good it was a great project and yeah everything was done by hand Mm -hmm. which was really nice 
uh, and it was, no it was, was wooden, a wooden bridge, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, there were steel. Uh, was it a suspension? It was a suspension bridge, so okay. the towers either side were steel, and we we lifted them up with winches, okay. which was just a physical, repetitive <laughs> power. <laughs> yeah. Uh, different people taking turns to get them lifted, and then the cables ran across the river over the towers and then we hung a uh, wooden planks off it to form the platform you would walk on okay. the walkway and all by hand and so I guess you don't do that very often do everything by hand or the lifting or the building everything so... yeah it's nice to see everything that, that everything still could be done mm. there's no reliance on equipment or technology so... yeah different side of things than you usually see Okay, um, a question. Have you built anything at home for yourself other than large projects with work? So have you put your skills to good use? Have you built a house? Have you built an extension? Have you got any plans to use your your skills for that? Um, <laughs> That's a good question, like, actually. <laughs> I helped my dad put up a bit of a shed. Okay. Yeah, probably most of the measurement was my part and then a bit okay. of the moving wood but yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah I'm not sure otherwise nothing too technical but yeah. it's a person I'm not sure. okay would you feel confident sort of going about building a house or building a structure with like for personal use sort of thing um house building is very different to what we mm -hmm. do so there's a lot of fine detail okay. that I would know um but if I was building a house I would probably try to project manage it myself rather than get a builder in yeah probably try and manage it. the different uh contractors so. right yeah that would make sense and your experience would be perfect that okay yeah cool okay so um also i think in your video um you showed that you'd won some sort of award i know you don't want to sing sing about awards winning but what sort of um <laughs> what did you win your award for and what are the things do you do what sort of outreach do you do some of your videos that i've seen are for sort of teaching and and putting out in schools and things like that so um yeah did you win an award for that or was it actually for being the best engineer <laughs> yeah there's um an award scheme i get it right women in construction and engineering okay. um different categories so the idea behind it is um because of the lower number to encourage people and to see what females can achieve in construction and engineering it's an award scheme to highlight the talent okay because uh, a lot of people say well you're just getting compared to other girls um mm. and there isn't that many of you but yeah. um it so the category I was in was best female contractor um so yeah I think I was in the top handful very good sure the numbers. <laughs> yeah it was nice to get nominated for it so yeah nice. and do you do a lot of sort of outreach work um I don't know if civil engineers become stem ambassadors I don't know if if, if you mm -hmm. become a stem ambassador and that sort of thing do you enjoy doing that sort of thing yeah yep um as a company we do quite a lot of mm -hmm. schools outreach and on each project uh, we'll have a customer care uh, slash community liaison mm -hmm. um, manager so they normally make contact with the local schools and colleges uh, in liverpool for example i think we had a couple of primary school visits secondary school visits um, and then from a college so from one of the college visits um, this is my good news story. We yeah. had a local guy asked to come for a two week placement. Okay. That was fine, got that organised. And then yeah. after his two week placement, he asked for a job. <laughs> um, so we managed to hire him and he's oh, now wow. getting put through uni. By oh, Paris excellent. While working. So working so, uh, yeah, so is it all, almost like degree apprenticeship sort of thing? So working on the job and doing his degree at the same time? Yeah, yeah. So it's really nice to be able to do that sort of thing yeah really satisfying no I did see on the stem ambassador or the stem awards recently that Farron's won one of the best community projects for a leisure center that was was built and then it sort of had all um children in the local schools and things involved in that so they did win an award for that I don't know I don't think you were linked to that 
but I did see Farron's as the company mm -hmm. that we're in charge of that so that's impressive okay I've got a question here about how old do you have to be to be an engineer is there any limits about being on site and things because I guess if you want to do work experience that could be a challenge in fact maybe so how old were you and, and are there any limits yep um I'm gonna say 16 you'd have to be 16 to be on site okay um, and then we would have a risk assessment for young people just for okay. un, unfamiliar with being on site and mm -hmm. um, generally people would be 18 and above normally huh. that would be on site but there isn't if someone was finishing college and starting an, or finishing school and starting an apprenticeship um, age wouldn't be an issue above 16. Okay fair enough yeah so 16 and above sort of the usual apprenticeship age or, or leaving mm -hmm. university age as well sort of around your 20s isn't it okay cool so no limits there so as long as you're sensible and it's a risk assessment, you should be OK. <laughs> risk assessment sort of thing. Um, yeah, someone's asked about um, maths and I know you enjoyed maths particularly. So uh, A level and at school. Um, so do you need to use maths a lot on a regular basis or sort of on a daily basis for what you do? Yeah, we would do, um, but not in a extremely complex way. Okay. You know, there's a lot of um, working out materials and quantities, mm -hmm. and then recording what we have done in terms of materials, quantities, numbers, um, but nothing more than a uh, socatoa and a bit of trigonometry. <laughs> okay. Not much, nothing too more high level. Working okay. Out triangles. How about in yeah triangles? Yeah, very useful in <laughs> in building. How about in the, the the design and the nitty gritty that you get down to? Is that the same sort of thing? Is it is it the same sort of maths there, or is there anything else you have to apply? There would be more um, mathematics in the, in the design stage before it reaches mm -hmm. site, um, and there's also a lot of modelling. So there's a lot of different programs that everything would be ran through. <clears throat> okay. And then a lot of those calculations are checked by hand then after the program oh. does. Uh, really so you, you use computers because we're all about the computers with Technicamps so you run models in your computers to see how a structure would work in in certain situations is that is that how the model works yeah in the design stage yep mm -hmm. and then but you still check the answers by hand yeah there would be a certain okay. amount of checking by hand yeah and the, okay. by the designers yep okay we, I was talking to someone about medical physics and putting their plan into a computer and they said they also check that by hand afterwards even though you know the computer runs the program so that's interesting that we do still want those human checks for errors mm -hmm. even though we're using our computers okay interesting so um was there anything to do with computers in as part of your degree did you do any programming for these sort of modeling um programs or anything like that or is that all come sort of later on as you've got into the work you know the world of work yep uh, at university we would we would have used a lot of autocad and then okay. some modeling software for structures which i'm not too sure the name of yeah uh, so i wouldn't use them now in work but or i would use autocad and all the engineers would use autocad okay. but um the modeling side would be a design consultant okay then they would complete the design check the design and then it comes to us to build it okay so we different people have different roles obviously in the in that process okay but um being good with computers or being familiar with computers is always a benefit i guess you've got to be yeah. confident to use them there's also a lot of <clears throat> there's a large focus now on bim uh, building oh, information that? modeling right okay so, so for example for the project we're on now we've got a 3d model of the whole project so um, okay. what's underground and above ground mm -hmm. um, and then that's used can be used to take measurements off it to mark out on the ground what we're building and okay. then to record the information against so when we install a pile we have a quality record for how we've installed it that's then linked into the model mm -hmm. to that item and then at the end of the project all our information is in one file right is then given to the client so there's okay a so they've got everything all the details that you could ever need 
<laughs> and all yeah. the data about it yeah okay so there's a lot so, of work now in that for if there were people in IT interested in engineering okay. there's yeah. a lot a lot in that area okay so was it called BIM BIM building information modeling we've got building that right. information BIM. modeling okay BIM BIM I'm trying to remember that <laughs> so if you're interested in data and and that sort of side of things then that's something to look into Okay, um, and I know I think this question did come up in our chat that I cut short because I cut, I turned the video off. So that was my my technical problem. Um, but this is going to be the last question. So I've asked you a lot today. Um, I've been quite full on, but thank you so much. Um, so what made you first want to be an engineer? Because I know in school you were interested in math. So how did that end up being, um, you know, engineering like you were doing now? Um, well, I always knew I liked to be outside, so I grew up. Okay. Uh, my first few jobs would have been on farms, mm -hmm. so I always knew I wanted to be outside, and I liked mathematics, so that was the only two real leading okay. factors. Um, my dad worked in construction, mm -hmm. um, and I used to go to work with him on Saturdays sometimes, so okay. I had seen a, a glimpse of it, I suppose, yeah. um, and I liked the look of it and wanted to build roads. And then have not built many roads to be fair. <laughs> so it's roads bridges. that got you interested in the first place. Yeah, yeah, That's I think it was uh, a motorway or dual carriageway job my dad was on, probably okay. around the time I was thinking of GCSEs and that sort yeah. of thing. So. Ah, so there you go. So you need to do more roads in the future, hopefully. Potentially, yep. <laughs> Potentially. <laughs> and how long? <laughs> yeah how many uh how long have you got left on your bridge project now so how long are you going to be there for uh there's two years on this project so summer 23 wow so that's it's quite not too you're there for, yeah so they're quite long projects but um do they go quickly generally yeah yeah we couldn't really believe we're, we're nearly into june yeah uh, already some a project for a year flies past mm. um Two years will be a bit longer, but again, it'll probably go quite fast. Yeah, oh, brilliant. OK, well, thank you so much for today. I've learnt loads more. I've just asked lots of questions that I wanted to ask as well, which has been great. Um, we've recorded this, so hopefully if anyone missed it, uh, we will be putting it up on our YouTube channel. Um, and yeah, thank you very much, Lindsay. If anyone has any questions that they you know, think to ask afterwards, then email them to um myself so laura.roberts at technicamps.com and i will happily forward them on to lindsay and get um mm -hmm. get an answer for you um so thank you very much look up farron's so that's the civil engineering company that lindsay works for uh and we'll put some the videos and everything as i said up on our youtube and links to it on our website so thank you very much for joining us um and we'll leave it there so thank you so much lindsay for taking the time out to talk to us today and um oh we've got oh someone's saying thank you in the chat so we can have lots of thank yous now so thank you so much um thanks very much we'll, sure, yeah. we'll keep in touch and be in touch again in the future